Hi everyone, it's Ryan Wolowski. I'm here in Washington, D.C. for the National Cherry Blossom Festival and we're going to meet with an author, Corky Hay de Simone, about her book, Cherry Blossom Friends. She's over here at this tent signing copies of her book before she heads over to the Smithsonian Museum. So we're lucky we have this moment with her. How are you doing, Corky? Great, how are you doing? Well, the sun is out, the blossoms have fallen, but it's still a great festival, having a great time. And now, you're here signing copies of the book. Tell us about what happens here at the Tidal Basin. For those of you who haven't been here yet, Oh, it's a fabulous place. For two weeks, we have the National Cherry Blossom Festival here in Washington, D.C. And mil a million people come to the city just to see the cherry trees. And on the peak of the cherry blossoms is somewhere around the April 1st or 2nd every year. And the, it's just amazing. It just comes in, the, all the trees bloom, and within two, three days, you know, four days, they're gone. So it's really a fleeting moment. And uh, but they're still, they're beautiful regardless. Now millions of people come here to visit the National Cherry Blossom Festival, but if you want to buy a book about this event, you'll probably find less than five right now. Tell us about your book, Cherry Blossom Friends. Okay. The book is about the cherry trees and how they came here. In 1912, 3,020 trees were put on a ship from Tokyo, Japan, brought across the Pacific Ocean, and uh, came to Seattle. They were then put on to a train and brought to Washington, D.C. It is pretty amazing to think that that many trees were transported over land and sea. And so they were then planted all over here, all over the tidal basin in Washington, D.C. This um, book tells the history of how they came to Washington. It also has, for the small, for the little ones, it has a rhyme and riddle section about the animals that live around here. And for the older children, it talks about um, all the fun facts about the monuments. So, for example, the Washington Monument and the Jefferson Memorial, the U.S. Capitol, the American Eagle, the Lincoln Memorial, and so much more, the Smithsonian. So what we want to do is we want to build background knowledge for the kids so when they come to Washington or while they're here, they'll have all this great information and they'll be able to just um, become the experts and the tour guide. The Kirk, were you surprised how many adults were interested in your children's book? I mean, here at the sign, you've got so many adults coming. Were you surprised at that response for a children's book? Yeah, because I think any time you take information, boil it down, and make it accessible to people, people are far more interested in in the content and in the, in the information. So, no, everyone would love to know about the about the U.S. Capitol or the White House. So, this is a wonderful way for the them pagoda. to learn. And the Japanese stone pagoda, which actually came to Washington in in a mul multiple crates, and there were no instructions. Nobody knew how to put this thing together and the, so they had to go to the Library of Congress and they brought all these experts down and tried to figure out actually how they would put a pagoda together. Now Corky I went online before I came here to